Hey guys, this is Zachary Lowen with Daily Iowa and TV Sports. I'm here with head coach Larissa Libby with the Iowa Women's Gymnastics Team, and she has been selected for the Coach of the Year Award for Daily Iowa. And Larissa and the Jim Hawks have been amazing this year, and they are heading to Illinois this weekend for the NCAA Regionals. So Larissa, um, can you talk about when you started up showing like interest in gymnastics and what age you started and when that sort of took off? Um, yeah, I think it's pretty common actually, um, in women's gymnastics at least, very, very young. I started at three. Um, I kind of followed my sister to the gym. I have an older sister, she's four years older than me and um, kind of was just kind of the thing to do. And I, I remember my parents having a heart attack one time because I climbed the rope at the gym and they couldn't get me down and I obviously did not know how to get down the right way. So that kind of launched my career in gymnastics and the rest is history, I guess. Can you talk about some of the accolades you received when you were a gymnast? Uh, you had the 1989 and 1990 Canadian Gymnast of the Year. I mean, that's a pretty big deal. So you can you talk about that, some other accolades you've had? Yeah. Um, I try not to talk about my past that much. Just, um, I was on the Canadian national team, world team, Olympic team. Um, I was the youngest competitor out of the entire Olympic Games in 1988, which is kind of dating me now. So I try not to talk about that very much. Um, I had a wonderful elite career. Um, I had a terrible back injury that spanned over six, seven years that basically ended my career. Um, I had to have my spine fused, so that kind of shut everything down. But prior to that, um, I had a wonderful international career. I was ranked 18th in the world. I was the first Canadian ever to make a vault vinyl. Um, I was ranked eighth in the world on vaults. Um, and then as I was dying out, kind of decided to move into the collegiate setting. Went to Louisiana State University and my body was pretty much shot by the time yeah. I got there. But i um, very grateful for the coaches that I had there who kind of gave me the opportunity to start coaching. Um, straight out of college, she offered me the opportunity to work with the team. And um, from there, I coached with her for five years and then came to Iowa. Can you talk about a little bit with LSU, like how big of a deal is that for you? I mean, not a lot of people can say they coach with their alma mater. Like, can you talk about that, how that made you feel? It was pretty amazing. And I think that when you're in those situations, you don't realize the opportunity that you're given. And certainly now, I mean, so many years removed, she launched my career. She's, I went to school to be a sports psychologist. Um, I wanted to travel with teams. And, and by the time I had graduated, I was so tired of traveling and really just wanted some time to just not move around. I had been on the road since I was 11. That was my first international competition. Um, so once she offered me the opportunity to coach, I kind of got in my head, I was like, why would I not do something that I absolutely love and you just don't see as work? Um, and so I'm so grateful for her to have opened that door for me and really taught me everything that I know, uh, taught me everything that I want to be, that I don't want to be, um, and, and just really launched my career. Um, I was an assistant for her, and so she's never really seen what I am as a head coach, so we go back there every once in a while, and, and she called me the other day to congratulate me on my Head Coach of the Year award, which she also won in the, <laughs> the SEC, so that was kind of cool, but it's nice to um, look back at my career at LSU and there's such a prominent program and I'm still a tiger at heart and will always be. It, she gave me everything that I am today um, and that program is so incredible and of course do we strive to be that yes but not the same way. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess you would be more of a role model just like your sister then you would say or whatever. Yeah. Anybody else that would be kind of inspired you or when you were younger? Um, you know, when I was younger doing gymnastics on the international scene, there were groups of people that I really loved their gymnastics when the European bloc was split, you know, when Russia was Russia and Romania was Romania, their their style and the, and the level of gymnastics that they were doing at that time was pretty incredible. Um, and so I know that I, like I, as a kid, I would always go home and watch videos. Um, VHS tapes that were available. <laughs> yes, um, I don't even know if you know what those are. I do. God. I do. Uh, to be able to watch those and, and just follow the type of gymnastics and the dedication and the grind that it took to be what they were mm -hmm. in that time. Certainly opportunities are not available to them the way they were to us. Um, 
and so yeah I had uh, groups of people that I really enjoyed their gymnastics and um, can you talk about the transition like you said you went to Iowa after LSU um, that's not easy to do I mean it's kind of bittersweet I would say in a way because leaving your you know college you graduated from going there so can you talk about that transition just talk about those days of traveling up there yeah um, really the decision was a family decision I'm I'm Canadian obviously yeah. and so my family's up here my husband um, his family um, is all in Indianola so um, we had always said that once it was time, we had a daughter in Louisiana, which was born there, and we had always said once it was time for her to go to school, we probably needed to consider moving. Um, if I was by myself, I probably would never have moved. I loved my job. I loved the kids. Mm -hmm. I loved working there. I really had formed that secondary part of your life there. All my friends, everybody that I had created in that part of my life, was there and I think I'm one of two people that left everybody else is still wow. there so um, when I go back it truly is a homecoming oh event um, while it's an alum an event it's my family it's all the people that helped me to grow up and to change and to get into this situation they're all still there so it's a big deal for me leaving was a very difficult decision but the the decision that I made was a family decision um, and it and it still stands today mm -hmm. I wanted to be closer to my family I wanted to give a, a stronger opportunity at a higher level of education and um, I, I don't think you get better than Iowa or the state of Iowa for goodness sake we created the ACT you know like <laughs> everybody in the world takes that test and exactly. so I it's a wonderful wholesome place to raise children and um, both positions came open at the same time one at Iowa State that was a head coaching position and one at Iowa that was an assistant coaching position and I just didn't think I was ready to be a head coach and so and my husband of course was born and raised a Hawkeye and there was no way we were looking over there so I'll say lucky for us you came here I yeah mean, <laughs> yeah um, can you talk about like some you coached for a little while here when you went to being a head coach uh, can you talk about when that day you were told you could be the head coach you had that job opening for it like how you felt kind of the, the process how that day went um, it was very scary. I was nine months pregnant. <laughs> um, so I was not a fan, not excited. It was not the way somebody wants to start their head coaching career. Um, I really loved the head coach that was here and brought me here, Mike Lorenzen. And actually, he's been to our last two meet. Um, when we were at GW, he came out to watch us. And then at Big Tens, he watched us again. So it's always cool to see those people that helped you get your start. Um, and you want to make them proud of you. You want them to, to feel like you've done a good job as they've passed the program on to you. But I was scared to death, like nine months pregnant and being told that the head coach is leaving. It kind of was like not, not on the plan or for me. Um, and it was very scary and very difficult. And I would say I never got it together for probably four years. I mean, I was trying to be the best mom and the best head coach and the best mentor and the best of everything and it it's really difficult for women uh, in this position um, it's really hard especially if you have kids and the sacrifices that you made or you make are usually on your family and they're the hardest ones to make so um, I have some pretty special people that surround me so I'm very lucky um, but yeah I just didn't get it together until probably four or five years <laughs> later and just establishing what I wanted the program to be uh, with, while still keeping in sync with what Mike Lorenzen had created there are things that were inherently me that I wanted to bring to the program so um, and so now here we are the 10 years later and um, I think they're working now do you do you have any great memory I mean, obviously that's a huge like memory for you or what's like some of the greatest memories you've had with your span of coaching so far um, I would say probably the first time that we qualified to the national championship was the biggest. Um, we were at Missouri and consequently in this exact same position. Um, we were the third seed. UCLA was number one. Oregon State was number two. So we're in an identical situation that we're going into at Illinois. Um, and nobody gave us a shot. And came down to the last event, last competitor, and I think we qualified by .025. Um, and so the assistant coach and I at the time had done the basketball thing, dumped a 
thing of water <laughs> on the head coach, which was so exciting. That's the only way to celebrate. Yeah, absolutely. you have to. And, and we got in trouble, of course. We got in trouble for it. But it was water. It was water. It's it was a Gatorade. Sure. It was totally worth it. Um, it's probably one of my most favorite memories. I, I can I feel, remember, can smell, think of everything that happened on that day. I remember when they announced it, the head coach putting his hands in his head and just like in disbelief that we had actually turned it over and done what we needed to do. So that's definitely one of my favorite memories. I think every team has something special about them mm -hmm. um, that creates the, the culture and, and this team is, is no different. They are an incredibly dedicated, wonderful group of young ladies and it, it would be very difficult to pick a moment with them that really summarizes everything that they've done. Awesome. Um, last question here. Can you talk about, like, what do you want the future of Iowa Gymnastics to be at? And then maybe your coaching career, where you see yourself in the future, maybe here, hopefully. But <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I don't plan on going anywhere, so hopefully, hopefully nobody else thinks I'm going anywhere. Um, I want to be a perennial powerhouse. I want the Iowa name to not be overlooked, um, and I think it has a tendency to be overlooked, maybe because we're in the middle of the country, so people think you're middle of the road. I don't know, but I think we have so many teams that are so great that people don't give any credit to. Um, again, I don't know why, but I, football, for instance, you know, the job that he does in the situation that he's in I think it's amazing. I, I don't think people understand how difficult it is in the situation that we're in, where you're not, like he always says, getting the five-star recruits. Because in this day of signing early um, verbal commitments when they're in the eighth grade and yeah, things exactly. like that, you know, to, to paint the picture, it's easy to know what you're going to get at the University of Florida. Mm -hmm. The beach, yeah. <laughs> you know that, yeah. sunshine. Mm -hmm. If you never go a day, mm -hmm never visit the campus you know that that's what it is because everybody knows what florida is exactly, exactly. you've known from when you're little disney world exists there yeah. <laughs> but nobody really knows about iowa mm -hmm. and it's a disadvantage and you're not committing having not seen it you're not going to do it so it makes it hard in that respect when you are having to verbal kids so early and our philosophy has never been to verbal without knowing the kid it's just look at the culture of our program how can you sacrifice that I rather get a lesser kid and know that her commitment to the culture and the environment that we create is top-notch um, because it only takes one to break you so um, it is difficult I do want not for myself, but for all the work, for all of the years that the kids have put in that have been here and set the culture for these kids who are graduating. I want people to stop doubting that Iowa is legit. Even now, we have put up score after score after score after score, and there is still somebody that will say, yeah, I don't think they're the real deal. Really? I, I, don't, I mean, I don't really know why. I mean, we're four tenths out from Michigan, but that has to be something wrong with the scoring or that Michigan did. And so after a while, it gets annoying. Mm -hmm. That's why as a coach, you try not to read those things or, and just do your job exactly. um, and satisfy yourself because it's what's important to your culture of your team and the kids that you have to face every single day. Um, but it is, it's hard to hear those things when you know that you're working just as hard as everybody else um, and to not be given that recognition. Um, and then to teach your kids to find a way to define a success outside of what outsiders would think. Um, because in the end, that'll kill you. Exactly. All right, Coach, I appreciate it so much. Thanks. Absolutely. Good luck this weekend. Thank so, yep, yeah, no problem. Appreciate Thank you again.